which was probably a little premature because now I need to start the virtual machine. Room can get hot. I probably want this class, but right next to <laughs> All right, come on. And, oh, I am crossing my fingers that I don't update here. Bye. Ooh, not a good thing. So, while we're waiting for Windows, <laughs> you don't, you can't see. Can you? I'm not sure you want to see this. It's a blue screen with a little spinning thing. <laughs> Come on. It's not showing that there it is. <laughs> so while I'm updating, let me talk a little bit about what we're going to start talking about. Um, so we did our web page last time and basically it's we did kind of a three year structure. Do you guys know what that is? Web form. Okay. And then basically what we did is we created a, a data layer and we did that with the ADL entities. And then the data layer talked to the database. So most of the data layer was created for us, and we're still going to do that. We didn't really have what makes it a three tier is that in between you have some classes that deal with the business logic. And our state we have any business logic, we're just passing things back and forth basically. So that makes sense. In this layer, you need to manipulate things, you need to summarize to uh, you know, calculations, things like that, then you can do it in the business layer. But these are all part of the same project here. Does that make sense? They're all part of the same thing. What I'm going to show you today is a way of separating it out, and this is actually becoming much more common. So we're going to make the web forms. Right, so we're going to still make the web forms. But before we make the web forms, we're going to make a service. You guys know what a service is? Probably used them. Never even thought about it. Most websites these days are just collections of services. And there's a whole thing called service oriented architecture, SOA. And it's sort of the next level. It's when you're talking about DevOps and everything, what you're doing is you're starting to develop services. And these services run independent of the actual application. Each service does like one little thing. And then your application is just a collection of those services. With the, um, in the web, these services run like a web page, except they have no front end. They have no form. They have no GUI. Right? You call them with an internet address, and you hook them into your web page. And I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to do it in C Sharp, but they, they write them in PHP. They write them in Python. They write them in Java. They can be in any language. What a web service does is it has all the code, like We'll do the login again. We'll do some things where we get it. All those methods are here. We'll just put those methods in there. And what happens is when you connect the web form to it, it passes a description of the web service. It says, I have these methods that take these 
documents and we'll return these. This gives you a description of what the web service will do. That description can come in the form of JSON or XML. We're going to use XML because that's what Windows does natively and it's really quick more work for us. That JSON is more popular now uh, because it's lighter weight XML um, and it's easier to, you know, it's just faster, lighter weight, easier to develop. The XML can be fairly complex to develop. Um, it, XML gives you more information, but the JSON is just, as I said, faster. <laughs> so there's more of it out there now. There's some advantages to making um, a web service as opposed to putting it into the web page itself, I mean, the, the web application itself. The main thing is this can be accessed from anywhere. You can change the web forms all you want. As long as you tie into the methods in the service, you can access the service. Um, it's much more secure. The web page here can talk to the service. It doesn't have to have any idea where in the entire world that database is. It doesn't know what the database name is. Doesn't know what the uh, database tables are. Has no way to pass anything from the web form to the database that can hurt the database. It can only talk to the service. The service is an abstraction layer between the web page and the, the database. So when you think about services, there are lots of services out there. The and, and developing this is easier to develop a quick, focused service than it is to develop a complete application. And an application, as I say, can just bring all one driving in things, right? You want to build a really big application for you. you can, but it's a lot faster just to create the form on here and have them call a, a service. What would the service be? The weather service, for instance, the plus that it's going to be thunderstorms today. Um, it could be something like a feed. You, you know, something like a gas buddy, right? Where you can go and figure out where the cheapest gas stations are. A lot of them are, are free and a lot of them cost money, right? So the service wouldn't have a front end like gas buddy. What it would be is a list of gas stations. It would be just a, I suspect, a JSON list of gas stations and their prices uh, focused on your geolocation, which is also a service. When you build an app, you don't have to figure out all the logic of geolocation. You just tie into the phone service right, that has already has that. So services are a way of breaking applications up into focused little activities. And it's also a way of um, securing it. And the nice thing about a service is that the services can be off, you know, on the phone or the web page. All you have to focus on is how you want to display the results of that service. Also, the information you need to pass back to the service. So this is a, a common way of developing now, and it's becoming more so. And again, when I say um, DevOps, one of the things that they do is they develop microservices all the time. That way you can do, and it's a pain. It's a pain for everybody, but that's the way the world is moving, is constant development. <laughs> you know, it's not, it used to be you went through a development cycle. You know, you would have an idea, you'd work out the requirements, you'd figure out how you're going to do that, you would build it, you would test it, and then you would deploy it. That could take a year or longer. So with microservices, you can build it in a couple of weeks, you can test it, and you can deploy it, and then you go to the next microservice. And if you need to update that service, you just update that one service, update the whole, you know. So when one application could have many services, yeah. We're only going to use one, but they could have many services, yeah. And you can just, linking to them is actually pretty easy. Um, I mean, really, it's just knowing their address. A lot of them charge money. You have to know that, too. So some of them you have to contract with in order to use their services. Things like um, airplane flight schedules, for a thing, typically cost money. It's a service out there. It's just, I mean, anybody can access it that pays them a fee. 
<laughs> and this, again, probably, though not always, talks to a database. So one of the things that this can do, like I have uh, some fitness things where I try to track how many calories I need. So uh, the service would have been updated. So there's a database there, and it's a service that's kind of keeping the database in sync with uh, the app. So if I, I can go on the web and I can see all the same information I see on the phone. They probably are also doing other things or collecting all that information itself, but that's a good thing. <laughs> okay. So that's a real shorthand. As I said, the books on this are, can be fairly thick. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of this. Again, part of this, even if you never use .NET again, I hope you kind of see uh, some structures of things that apply to all web development, really. So I'm going to bring up Visual Studio. And the code for this, it sounds complicated, but the code for this is actually going to be very similar to the code you've already done. So it's not going to be a huge stretch. It's just a different way of organizing things. Come on, Visual. Some of the things that we're going to do here, we did already. Um, so I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to do an empty website. Visual Studio, new and updated MEF components. I'm not sure what MEF stands for. <laughs> Yeah. Or It's confusing to move from one to the other, you know, the different logins. The dot kind of, there you do what, actually I don't even know for the, for the other one. We should probably change this, as we call David, just to be consistent. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start a file, new website. Also, um, I didn't open up Canvas right yet, but there's uh, there are some blog things and some GitHub things that relate to what I'm going to do already there. They're more complicated than I think I'm going to do here. I'm going to make a website, and I'm going to call it, I could call it, what is the assignment? They're not in order because I forgot to renumber them when I deleted a couple. OK, let's just do. I'm just going to call it service assignment, except I didn't spell it right. Not that that matters a whole lot, but OK, I'm going to do OK. And we'll do it as empty, right? So I did it, I'm pretty sure I did it as an empty one. So I'm going to bring out the solution explorer. And I'm going to lock it, OK, just for now. So I'm going to the things that we did before. One of the first things I'm going to do is bring in the database. So the service will talk to the database, right? And then the web pages will talk to the service. So the easiest way to talk to the database is the same way we did it last time. I'm going to right click add. And um, I'm going to add ADO.net entity model. So we get to run that wizard again. We'll actually get to run it for every assignment. <laughs> yeah. Well, File new. 
So not that one. You're on the wrong file name. <laughs> yeah, file new uh, website. So if you don't have it, no, oh, you just need to go to the, uh, you don't have the ad. Oh, there is the ad. So then go to new ID if you don't have it in the list. And then it's at the bottom. Oh, we do a new one. And then just add and that. So if it's not here, just go to add new item and find it in the list. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing it again. As I said, you'll get to run this wizard until you have it down by heart. So, again, I used to show, and if you want some time, I could. I don't know if we have time, but I'll show you how to connect without using this wizard, because you can. You can do it all by hand. But if you look at the Microsoft stuff online, they all use this now. And why? Because it's really easy <laughs> compared to the other way. This, you know, what I'm doing right now, and I, I'll say yes for the, uh, it's all right, .NET, uh, the app code folder. This takes what, it takes about three minutes because I explain every step, but if I were just doing it, it would take like uh, a minute. And to write it by hand would take a couple of hours. <laughs> so, so, and I'm going to go to, so I don't have, again, for the example, I'm going to connect to Um, book review. And I'm going to just do OK. I never showed you this. You can test the connection. Uh, that being said, if it's here, you've got the connection. And this doesn't guarantee anything. It just means that it can touch the database and knows it exists. It doesn't say you have any permissions. One of the things that happens when you put this actually online is you have to be a lot more careful with your permission. Uh, so, uh, typically the permissions that we're using won't carry over there. You're going to have to mess with the permissions quite a bit. I do have a, a little blog entry about setting up IIS to use this. Yeah. All right, so it could be that your database is down. Right, so do a new database, <coughs> new connection, right? Okay. So is it just single expense? Did you 
period of It's basically the same thing. What is it saying? Yeah, I Sometimes the service shuts down if it detects a lack of resources at some point. And, uh, So here's the solution. So do edit. Actually, it's right here. Solution is the second time. All right. So book review, yeah. All right, same problem. Oh, so don't say super server. Say local host. So do OK. So go back. We need to get that. Okay, go next. Uh, do the new connection. And then local host, we have to choose the database. And then choose the database. Click the back one. And we hope we do. You guys doing okay? Yeah, new website, and then we're adding this to the new website. I'm just going to do next. Generally, I always go with the most current framework, so I'll do next. And um, all right, so what I want to do is again, just for speed. I'll just choose all the tables. We don't necessarily need them all. Yes, and the store procedures. Uh, so I'm going to just choose all the tables, and then I will. We really only need a new reviewer and a reviewer login. I don't remember exactly what I asked for in the assignment, but I'll do basically similar to what we did. I'll have it so we can add a new reviewer, register a reviewer, and I think I asked pretty much to do similar kinds of things in the. The thing. So I'm just going to finish. It's interesting. Okay. And with luck, it will create the di the diagram. Oh, slowly. This it all might happen. <laughs> of course, I've got a 
more powerful machine with more RAM. Well, this actually has more RAM than the machine with more RAM. This has 32 gigs of RAM. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this will be good. If you're okay, So I got an, ex an error. What it, what exception? I'm going to do OK. I'm going to ignore the exception and hope I can continue. That looks good. So you guys have any problem? Yeah, don't don't ever click that down button. So type of Necessarily connected. Did you go back? Oh, so yeah, just do that. And then uh, choose, just choose all the tables in the last two sort procedures. So, as I said, I hope this works. I had an error, but it ran. Everything looks like it's there, so I'm going to let it. I'm just going to believe it is. <laughs> Once you have this, again, it's always a good idea to save it, and you get these error message again. And they're not actually error; they're just warnings. Anytime you connect to the database, it tells you that there's some risk. Okay, so everybody kind of got the data. Right. Once you have the data, and again, this although it took us a while because we had to run around uh, and do things, but it, it's fairly quick and easy once you get the hang of it, and the wizard is pretty much the same. There are some other things you can do with this wizard, but we're not going to. One of the things you can do is you can create your database on the fly at that instant if it doesn't exist. So when you get to this designer, if you choose like the third option, you can actually just design your tables here save it and it will write them to SQL Server. All right. You can also ignore the designer altogether and you can write all the code. We're not going to do any of these things, but I'm just letting you know. Um, 
Satuan Of course this could be the problem I wanted to look at the None of these are showing code. Why are they not showing code? But anyway, the, it, you could write the code yourself and ignore the designer. I am going to run mine again real quickly. I'm not going to talk through it this time, but I think that error was an error. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, all right. That's, you know, Visual, this is a thing with DevOps. Visual Studio used to be guaranteed pretty much um, error free, but because they are developing things so fast with all the, you know, the, the constant development. They, for the first time, really, I've discovered that uh, Visual Studio has a fair number of errors in it. <laughs> um, well, so there are things there. The fact that you have those is a good sign. Let's see what I got for Solution Explorer. Am I going to get all my, although I didn't actually have a whole lot here. So I am going to try running at this again. Add ADO data model. I'm just going to call it model. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to do design from database. Uh, I'm going to use the book reviews connection. Uh, I'm going to do the tables. I'll get the last couple of those. One of the things that I think confused a lot of you to notice it pluralize or singularize. What it's saying is that if your table name is a singular, it's going to make turn it into a plural for the class name. And if your name was plural, it will turn it into a singular for the class name, for the storage class name. It's doing this in sort of to keep a distinction, you know, between the container and what's contained. Uh, it's going to include foreign key columns, and it's going to import selected sort procedures. So it's going to do all of that. So those check marks are kind of important. The other thing, the one problem I saw a lot of people had: don't ever name two things the same. <laughs> if you name two things the same, it gets confused. So there's going to be a donation class in here. This was the one that happened the most. If you create a donation web page, the donation web page is a class. This is donation, so you have two donation classes. And it doesn't know which is which. And what it does in the donation class is to say donation, you're talking about the web page, not the data class. And so it's very hard to do anything. And it's a little bit of a pain to rename things, as you, some of you might uh, know. So it's just a good idea as possible never to name two things the same. And that's just generally true in programming. Programs are not good at sorting, you know, two names out. They often don't throw an error because they give local precedence. The one that's closest to it gets precedence over the other one. OK, I think I'm ready. Let me look. So first, let's make sure that there's code in it this time. Yes, because they were empty last time. So these are the things you could write on your own if you wanted to create the table directly from code. It's not as hard as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, you'd only have to write this page, and and actually, the these um, these parts you could probably ignore. Um, although what these are doing is they um, the i collection thing is it's creating a basically a list of all of the all the records that are related to it. 
So it's basically creating an array so I can store all the related records. So you might want to do that. But notice it's mostly just the field names and the get and set. Okay. And it's, but for the most part, at this point, I would just leave it alone and not touch these things. Because if you mess with them and not knowing what you're doing, you will simply um, make a mess. And it won't work anymore. <laughs> All right, so we can kind of ignore the model there because we've got it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something new that we haven't, and this is where the service stuff comes in. So I'm going to add, and what I want to add, um, I'm going to go to add new items because I don't see it there. And what we want is a WCF service. And are these in alphabetical order? They seem to be. And we want just the generic. For what we're going to do, we're just going to use the generic WCF service. We don't want the data service. The data service, by the way, is the one that does JSON, but it takes a little bit more work. Um, there's an AJAX enabled one. So if you want asynchronous kinds of methods, you can do that. But we're just going to do it a straight WCF service. Does anybody know what WCF stands for? Windows Communication Foundation. Correct. You looked it up. <laughs> you should have. You might have to scroll down. You don't have straight service? Just define WCF service. Foundation. Yeah. Start above the actual, uh, like a, just at the project level, where it says May 4. No, higher, higher. May 4. Yeah. I didn't do the add. And then a uh, new item. And go down to the W's. There it is. That's interesting though at the code level. So I'm going to name this service. Uh, it actually is not a bad idea to name them because you will refer to it by name. And service is a bit generic. Uh, let's call it book review service. Now, actually, so if I were to do this, I might make some different so that like one for login. One of the things with the idea of uh, is that the service should be very fast and do like one thing. That way you can add and remove them as you need. I'm going to do like two or three things, which, <laughs> but I, but part of the problem is that we're not putting these in um, Windows Control Foundation. I mean, not Windows Control, my brain is Communication Foundation. We're not putting them in Internet Information Server, so they're not actually available. So when we test this, we're going to have to have two copies of Visual Studio. And a little, if I'd had like five services, we'd have to have five running and left on it to configure IIS, but that would take us the next two weeks probably. I do, as I said, I have a um, blog. I, I, could, I think there's a link to it about configuring the IIS. It's a lot harder to configure than Apache. And I'm not sure why. Microsoft would say because it's more secure, but I'm not sure that's true. All right. So do you guys know what interfaces are? They're sort of a way. They're sort of an inheritance. Sort of. Yeah, they are. They're Actually, one of the things that they're good for is to get around the prohibition against multiple inheritance. But basically, an interface, when you do an interface, you create uh, method signatures. And when you apply an interface or implement it, it means that um, the class has to give a body to those. The advantage of that is that you can um, basically say uh, when 
it can pass this interface to the web page and it says I have these methods, they take these arguments and they return these values. The interface is a lot lighter weight than the actual class will be. It's really just, you know, a really just the method signatures is all it consists of basically. Does that make sense, sorta? Now, only in uh, these services we have to do this operation contract. Because you can have methods here that are part of the interface that are not part of the operation contract. What the operation contract here means is that this method will be passed to the web page. Right? It'll, it, if you don't have operation contract, it'll just be local. It won't be passed to the web page. You have to do an interface here. Um, we could talk. Interfaces are a, a really core part of uh, object-oriented programming. But it's a long story and a bit complicated. <laughs> so we do not need a method called do work. All right, so let's create a method. I'm going to do int, <coughs> and it'll be um, login. Let's capitalize it. And then I am going to do. Um, so it's going to take two arguments. It's going to take a string for the user and a string for the password. Okay, so we're going to just do the, and the code that we're going to put in this ultimately will be exactly the same as what we did in the other. So this, this is the whole contract. We're saying we're going to return an integer, and it takes two arguments, a user and a password. You don't have to write it here. I'll show you where you do write it, but not here. Does that make sense so far? It might make sense when we actually use the interface. I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to do another operation contract. And let's do, um, and do we want a bool or an int? Let's just do bool. Bool is boolean, true or false. You need that up higher. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, register uh, reviewer. And um, I'm debating what to pass in here. So when I do the review, I just want to look at the table. Actually, let's look at the store procedures. Because we have that add reviewer, the register, new reviewer. And those are all in reviewer, aren't they not? Yeah. So I'm just going to do. So I'm just going to pass in a reviewer object. The other alternative is to pass in last name first, a whole bunch of things. So it's, it just makes more sense to pass it in as an object. There's a thing that for the people thing, the person one, you might you have to combine three tables. So there's a couple ways you could pass in the three tables, or you can actually create your own data class. Um, but I won't. Let's see. Um, so let's do another operation contract. I'm not going to do a lot. I just want to give you the gist, and then we can expand on this as we need. What else do I want to be able to add? Maybe add a book. Or let's say we're doing the registration. Let's do something different. Let's just um, let's just get a list of all the books. And maybe I'll do. Are you outside? I am, which I should not be. No, am I? Yes, I am. How did I do that? 
good eye. <laughs> I'm going to say, um, I'm going to make a class called Book Info, because I do want to show you how to do something. Uh, and I'm going to say, get books. And I'm just going to return all the books. And now book info doesn't exist. Oh, and no, no curly braces. This is an interface. <laughs> I'll fix book info in a moment. And I'm going to do one last one. And again, in real life, you might want to break these up, but I don't want to have to open up multiple, too many versions. So I'm going to say, I'm going to return just a uh, book info, and I'm going to say uh, get a book. What do we want to pass in to get the information for a book? We could, OK, that's a good one. Let's say get books um, string, say author name. Okay, that's enough. That'll give me a chance to show everything, I think. Now, the book info is underlined, and we'll fix that in just a second. So we're going to create an object called book info. It's going to be different than the book table because it's going to include the author information. You guys help for this? You ready? You need it. So those are our operational contracts. So those are the we're going to have four methods. So each method uses. Well, each one. So you, you, if you don't have this here, it won't give you any error. This, but this will be only internal. The web page won't be able to see it. The operation contract here means pass this information to the web page. Right. So the web page, when we tie to the service, which will be not this assignment but the next. Uh, we'll be able to do a login, we'll be able to uh, register a reviewer, we'll be able to list the book, all the books, and then list the books by the author. Does that make sense? That's what the web page will be able to do. It'll have these as options. It doesn't have to do all of these. But the web page will have these as options from this service. Okay, so we don't have a book info. And I'm doing this. This could be on a separate page, but I'm going to do it here. It is actually not part of the interface. But I am going to do a data contract, and I'll come up here. Oh, come on. Why is it wanted? So I'm frozen. How long will I be frozen? So what a data contract is, is basically we're writing another data class, kind of like those data classes that it wrote for us. Sometimes I do this when, and this is part of your assignment, when you do the register a new person, there's three different tables actually involved in that. Ah, good. All right, so data contract, I'm going to say public class, and um, that should be lowercase, uh, I'm going to call it book info. And I'm going to, um, so we need basically a string, and these need to be public, and they need to be data members. So it's going to be public uh, string uh, reviewer so actually you could do reviewer or well, let's do it they don't have to match the underlying I'm gonna say user name but we could just do username let's do a username and then I'm going to do curly braces, get, set. Did we do these before? No. 
You know what they're doing, just as a guess. It's automatically generating. It's automatically generating the get and set statements. It's a shortcut Microsoft has. You don't have it in Java. I mean, in Java, you can right click on it and it will generate the get and set statements. But this is a real shortcut for generating the get and set statements. <laughs> Yep. So I'm going to do uh, first name. And what I'm trying to do is get the uh, fields that are needed by the stored procedure. Uh, actually, this is book info. This isn't, never mind, my brain is gone. What do we need for book? We need the book title. Uh, so it would be um, string, public string. My brain is gone. I was doing reviewer, and what we really need is book. Um, book title. Same thing, though. Getting set. And then I'm going to copy this. It's just because so I don't have to... So data member, but instead of book title, this will be like book entry date. Um, get and set. And it probably, let's just do it as a string. We'll probably have to convert the date, but that's all right. And then uh, the ISBN. And then I'm not sure, I'm going to do, so I'm going to paste again. I am going to do this as list author, uh, and I'm going to call it book author, because a book can have multiple authors. Right, so I'm going to do an array of authors, basically a list of authors. <laughs> we'll see if this works. If I'm not getting myself into trouble, we could just ignore the author and it would be easier. But I wanted to show you how to do a class. So that's our data class. That's all of it. So to walk from the top down, we have operations contracts, right? We have the... Uh, um, we have the login, the register reviewer, the get books, and the get books by author, which that wouldn't work if we didn't have the author down here. So we got book entry date, book book title, book entry date, book ISBN, and then a collection of authors. A lot of times that will only have one author in it, but there are some that have two or three. And that, that's all for the interface in the data class. <coughs> like always, when I talk about doing this stuff, I would not assume you could sit down and just do this, right? If you can, you don't need the class. <laughs> um, I would assume that either somebody shows you how to do this at some point, or you could, you could learn it by going on the internet and finding lots of uh, examples and sources and things. Okay, are there are you guys ready for the next step? Okay, so in the solution explorer, we finished our interface. And one other thing I wanted to mention, Microsoft is just a naming convention, but it always starts interfaces with the letter I. Don't have to, but that's just Microsoft naming convention. Uh, what are they? Oh, yeah. Exchangeable, yeah. One of the advantages of an interface is that it, 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 one reason why it is a contract is that if you are another program and you're calling something, what the interface tells you is that any class that implements this interface will have these methods. You're guaranteed that, right? So it's a contract. So in the app code, there's another. Um, I'm going to collapse the model a little bit. 
but there's a, a service, right? So there's the iBook service, and then there's the book review service itself. The book review service itself is a public class book review service, and it implements, if you do Java, implements iBook review service. And that's underlined. Why is that underlined? Because you are not implement. You have that service, but it's not being implemented. You can do this in Java too. But if I mouse over it, there's this little stupid icon with the light to say that there's a suggestion here. And if you move your mouse over to it, one of the things you can do is say, implement the interface. So I am going to do that. I'm going to implement the interface. And I can undo it if you want. And what it does is it gives me an empty method for each of those things in the interface. So I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll delete all of these and do it again. Now, you certainly could type all these in. However, one typo and nothing works. <laughs> so when this is read like that, if you mouse over it, don't click on it, mouse over it. And then you have the little suggestion icon. Microsoft loves icons that have no explanation. But if you go over there, there's a little drop-down list. And if I put the mouse over, the, click on that, it tells me I can implement the interface or I can implement it explicitly. The only difference between implementing it, right, just implementing it and implementing it explicitly, is if you're implementing multiple interfaces, it would identify which interface it came from. Does that make sense? So instead of saying uh, login, it would say uh, I book review service dot login. It would just give you the you know which interface it comes from. We don't need that. I'm just going to implement the interface, and what it does is it gives you all of the methods that were in the interface uh, with their signature, and then each one of them has throw new not implemented. So there's no code in them yet. Can you go back? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, again, you could type these in, but if you have any typos, you're going to have problems, right? One other thing is that between the class and the, and the interface, they have to match. The, the signatures have to match exactly. So if you make changes, like you're editing and fixing things, if you make changes in the interface, you have to update it over here. And vice versa, if you change the interface here, or the signature here, you have to change it in the interface. They have to match. There are two parts of the same thing in some ways there. In that so are you mousing over? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, because I, I just see you've got a couple of plots in there. Right, yeah. but so there should be a service plus. Uh, okay, so get rid of the So these are two different classes, right? The interface and this. They're two different things. I'm going to do the book one first, I think. Oh, the other thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it 
at class level is I'm going to make a connection to the data entities. So we should have community service, or not community services, book review. Book review. Mine is book review database entities one because I reran the wizard. Yours is probably doesn't have the one on it. I'm going to just name it DB equals new uh, book review database entities one. And I'm doing that at class level because I'm going to need to refer to it under each of these, right? And I'm going to have to refer to the data thing under column. So rather than rewrite this line four times, I'm putting it at the class level. One of the things I don't like about Python is that it doesn't have class level variables. <laughs> You guys got this? I have the feeling I'm starting to leave people behind. <laughs> You're frozen. I'm sorry. If you wait, it usually unfreeze. Yeah. All right, so the only thing I've done other than implement the interface is I've added this book review database entities. And again, yours probably doesn't have the one. If you, if you find yourself deleting it and rerunning it again, the way it distinguishes saying the first one, the first one doesn't have a one, the next one has a one, the next one will have a two, et cetera. So if you have to delete it two or three times, you could get up to Can change this? Okay, what this? Yes. Yes, so if you go have into number one, uh, it doesn't have I wouldn't add a one to it. Notice how in my connection streams. So if I, that's because I ran it twice. I have both connection strings, yeah. Um, you could, uh, yeah, I could, I could delete one and remove, but. It's it's a minor inconvenience. <laughs> so yes, I could do that. But I didn't want to go into editing the config right now. <laughs> All right, so let's do the first one. I'm not sure how far we'll get today. One thing I was gonna to say too is I don't think it'll be this Friday, but one of these Fridays I'll come in if you guys need a day where you just need me to help. Um, I, I will announce, but, but sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'll come in on a Friday and be here for the labs. So what I want to do is just call, get all the books. This one just lists all the books, right? So this is just a query kind of like var. So we've done this before. I'm going to call it BKS. don't want to call it books because there's a thing called books already. Um, and it's just a little query, and as I said, I don't expect these, these, I expect these to still feel pretty alien, but if you do them enough, you start to get a feel for them. They always start with from, and I'm going to, then you create a variable, and it's a little bit weird to create a variable without declaring it, but there it is. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a single letter, you could name it whatever you want. And then I'm going to say from B in DB, which is my variable for the database, dot uh, books, which should be right there. Uh, except we want book info. We want to return book info, right? But we can do that. This is going to take a little bit more than I was thinking, but that's fine. Um, I'm also going to do I think I want to do from well let, let me try select first select uh, new and then I'm going to do a curly braces, and I'm going to do b dot 
book title, comma, B dot um, book entry date, comma, B dot book ISBN, comma. I may have to make a slight adjustment up above this one. I'm going to try it. B dot authors dot, and I can't see the author name, so I can fix this. Uh, actually, can I? This is a little bit different. I think I'm going to do from a in b dot authors. I'm trying to remember the syntax for this. We should just ignore authors. <laughs> they won't work to just say. Um, so you have two froms. Yeah. Yes, I have two froms. And I could get to author. So the thing is that this is a list of things. So I'm trying to remember. There's a lambda notation for this. Actually, I might not have to do anything. I could probably just return the authors. Probably OK to do that. Yeah, I think I can do that. You can tell I have to think through these things, too. <laughs> All right. so. This allows me, because authors and books are related, and one of the neat things about the data entities is they understand relationships. Uh, but I actually don't think I need it. I was going to do something there that I don't need. Usually you can get like the author name from there, so I don't think we actually need this li line. Because the, the built-in database book thing automatically contains a collection of authors. So I actually, I think, we built our uh, author info, and not sure, or book info. I'm not sure if we really needed it, but I'm going to use it anyway. So this is going to be a little bit complicated. So having got that, so I basically just returned all the book objects, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it into the book info object. But it, as I said, I think the book object would have been sufficient. I don't think I needed to create my own. <coughs> But since we did, I am going to do for each uh, so what do I want to call? So actually I want to make a list. A list book info. Uh, we'll call it books lower lowercase. It's very important that this be lowercase. So as not to conflict with the other one, equals new uh, list book info. Those of you that have done Java, that should look pretty much like the, what is it not like about, oh, it's because I did a lowercase l. Should look a lot like setting up a list in Java. Anybody ever done that? <laughs> One person, two people, okay. <laughs> Not a lot, okay. Let's just say that a list looks like just like that in Java. The square bracket, the angle brackets, or whatever you want to call these, less than greater than signs. 
so mean that this is a generic. So the data type is determined on that runtime. So I'm going to say for each uh, BK in BKS. Oh, and I need to give uh, for each um, book BK and BKS. So I'm going to loop through this. What is it not like? Oh, you know what? I can fix this. I can make this even easier. Because <laughs> I don't need the individual fields because they're all there. And that makes this work easier. So I'm going to um, I'm going to create a book. Book. I need a. I'm running out of ways to say book. <laughs> I could use B again. Would that confuse you? All right. So uh, was that a yes? <laughs> uh, I've done BKS. I've done BK. I've done B. What? Like that? Although there's going to be several books, but equals new book. And where does book come from? Anybody know? <laughs> the, the big book, the blue one, the teal one. That's it's in the data entities, right? It created a, a, a class for every database table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say book one dot uh, book title equals uh, actually yeah equals uh, we did it up above BK dot book title and again this is actually kind of all extra we don't really need to do this but since we made the object I'm going to show you how to use it because you do need to do this in your assignment because you're dealing with multiple classes this thing has it all pretty much in one class uh, book one dot book uh, entry date equals bk dot book entry date book one dot um, book ISBN equals bk dot uh, book ISBN and then I'm going to do do I need to do another loop? This. All right. Did I use a U yet? No, I didn't use an A even. All right, for each A. Whoa. For each author A in BKS dot so I need to do so it wouldn't be author in oh I know what it would be and um, BK dot authors should be there yeah BK dot authors. Oh, and that author A in. Come on. I just need the word in. Uh, um, so it would be book one dot authors 
dot add a. As I said, this is all kind of um, excessive, but it shows you a pattern that you can use. So I'm going to say book one dot. Oh, actually, we don't need book one dot now. So our it's books is our um, our list. So books dot add. <coughs> And we'll add book one. So we're adding them to our list, right? Except why is it not like that? Oh, book. This needs to be book info. Yeah. So. Did I just say entry date? Oh, it's it's date time. So I need to do two string. Let's just do a two short date string. I think it's happy, except for one last thing, which is to return uh, books. Okay, that's more complicated than it needs to be, but the reason I did it that way is because there is one in your assignment that's kind of that complicated. So what I did, so we have our query, and we're getting all the books. Basically, that what that query does is it just goes and gets all the books, right, as book objects. I created a list with the book info type in it, even though, as I said, it's excessive because the book type actually has everything we need. Okay, then I, I looped through our results, and I assigned um, the stuff from the BK, which is the one that's in the results set here. I assigned the values all over to our new class. So we're just copying those values across over to our new class. And down here, because it's multiple, because it's an array or a list, I had to loop again. This is not very efficient. For each loop and server for each loop is actually not a great idea, but it's what we do. <laughs> um, we can test this. Shall we test it? So I am going to run. And if I have any typos, it will tell me now. So one of the things, there's no actual interface for this, and I'll show you when we get there, but it does have a testing tool, which hopefully will show up here in a minute. There it is. It's taking a while to add. OK, so oh, I failed. Everybody has it? What does it say? Yeah, I know metadata, but I'm not sure. It says I have the same name, two operations with the same name. Do you have an error on line I don't. Or around, or if you scroll down. It says I have two things with the same name. Register viewer, get books. Oh, I do. Um, this is a weird thing about these uh, interfaces for the services. This is totally legal, but it won't allow it. Right, because they're, they're the same. This is what normally would be called polymorphism. It's the same um, method, but with different arguments. But it won't do that in WCF. So I need to name this something. Get books. 
by author. And if I change it here, I have to go over here. And even though I'm not using that right now, uh, so we got, I'm going to change this to get books by author. And that should be happy now. So in the service, I changed it to get books by author. And then over here, get books by author. And let's see if that makes it happy, because that's what the error was, is that it had two methods of the same name. As always, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would, but that's OK. All right, so at least got to here. It lists all of the methods. The ones with X's beside them, that's not errors. It just means that we net, we didn't write an asynchronous version of this. You guys know what asynchronous is versus synchronous? No. So with these, when you have a synchronous, you make a call, and then the program waits until you get a response. All right, so a synchronous, you have a call, and then you wait for the response before you move on to the next thing. Asynchronous means you make a, a call and you keep doing other stuff and uh, you take the response whenever it comes back. So it's not, the program doesn't pause for the response. That's a little more complicated to write. It involves threading. We're not going to do threading right now. So. I'm going to, uh, the only one we have, right, is give books. So I double click that. Up here, you can put any parameters that you need, but we really don't have any parameters. It's just get the books. So I'm going to invoke it. I'm going to do OK. And we get an error. Something is not set to a, oh, I know, I know the problem here. Do I? I might have to make author new. Why is it doing? I don't need it to be new global. I just want it to be a new author. Um, So I made the author new here. This is all more complicated than I meant to show today. And then author name, uh, I just took in the author name. That's all I'm actually doing there. Could have been a, a list of strings for that matter. I'm going to try one more time and see if that was the, the thing that didn't exist. These are really hard to troubleshoot, by the way. I just hit the run button. So if I do get books and if I do invoke and I do OK, still it's still the author that doesn't exist. And I think it may be I'm curious about, do I have any books without authors? Uh, 
Um, this is all way more complicated than I want it. Yours won't be as complicated. I may go back to the simple form of this. Well, there are no authors in the book table now. So let's do uh, select star from book. Let's actually, let's just do select a book title, author name from book, enter join author on author um, no, dot author key. Actually, I want book. So I need actually another enter join. trouble typing and I wasn't trying to troubleshoot so much today the only thing is I think sometimes oh it's author book <laughs> okay so if I run that invalid author where is invalid name Oh, uh, author name, I spaced that. So let's see. Um, have any nulls. There's no books without nulls. What is it giving me what it is? I know what's, I do know what's, I was trying to figure out what's null. It's not the, it wasn't the author. Uh, it's the list. I think I have to initiate this list, but um, book author I wonder if I can do this uh, no I don't want so it's fun Book equals new list book author. I don't think that that list was ever initiated. Is that happy? No. All right. One of the things you guys don't have to do is 
Coherence by start there. I will tell you what I'm doing if it works. <laughs> I'm making a constructor where I initialize um, the book off thing, and then down here I'm just going to to say I don't know if I need to again. No, if I do. With what? About this? Just in the new ones. Oh. In the other one? Over here, you just made a new list? Where did you make the list? So, why did it? So, book one, book. New. Um, it just it wasn't. Um, oh, it's not list author. A list author. Now, why is it happy? Did I type something different last time? So I'm going to get rid of this. If that. So I need you need to run these two from the. Let's see if that works. Oh. I just wanted to show you what it looked like, and then I think we may be done for the day. Let me just call it. We'll finish it next time. So I'm going to get books. I'm going to invoke. I'm going to do OK. And it didn't crash. Yay. Now, one of the things I want to show you, it just says 0, 1, 2, 3. But if you look at this, let's look at 1. If you click that little arrow, it gives you the book. Uh, author, which it tells you that the link for that is one. Notice there's a little arrow there too. There's a book entry date, a book ISBN, and the book title. And if I open up the book author, uh, it will tell me that the author's name is Don Delillo. Right, because it's an array, so I have to open it up too. So basically, all the information is here. It's returning it all. Um, when you do this, though, it, it, it's a little confusing at once when you just get these numbers, right? So if I do three, so I'm looking for one that has multiple authors. It might be zero. Yeah, so if I just notice it's linked is two, and if I do one, there's Jill, uh, I can never say his name, Deleuze, and then there's, um, so there's two authors to that text. So it is returning all the information properly. Now, the, the point of this thing here is purely to test things, right, just to see if it's actually good. 
uh, posted it before you send it to the web pages. You have to invoke, and then you get the errors. One of the things, as I said, these are a little bit hard to troubleshoot sometimes. Um, one of the things that I might do for you that I probably should have done a little more today, I'm going to close that, I'm going to s is uh, show you how to, that little thing when it gives you a little box there, it doesn't tell you much, but if you go to details, it gives you tons of information about the error. I mean, literally tons of information, including exactly where it happened. So this was more complicated than it needed to be. We could have just passed the books through straight. Right? We, we, we didn't have to do any of this. But when you do your assignment, and, and you don't have to do it because you're not retrieving these, right? You're, you, it's actually easier because you just need to get it from three tables and then pass it into the stored procedure, which I'll show you how to do next time with uh, what we, the reviewers. I will post this. I'll put it on GitHub, and we'll keep uh, expanding it as we finish it. Right. So you can finish up your other assignments if you want to work on anything this weekend, or uh, and I will give you some other time too. But we're not. You could, if you want, you could start this assignment and do the one method. You could probably figure out if you want it, if you're feeling ambitious, the code for the uh, login method is exactly the same as the code we used last time. <laughs> and the, um, the register reviewer, remember we registered uh, for the, I mean, if we wanted to do just a sample, the register reviewer is exactly the same code we used for in the other one. The codes will be exactly the same as what's in the web page. Just that we're doing them in the service. Gitbook's author is a little bit different, although I think I may change this just to return the book rather than do the book, the, the complicated thing we did up here. But we'll do it next time. These could be fun when you get the hang of them. It probably doesn't seem like it now. <laughs> I realize my, I've said this in the many classes, my sense of fun is a little distorted. <laughs> but uh, once you get, and it takes a lot of practice to get this. I'm not expecting you to come away with anything other than a, an idea of what we did. If you really want it, you need to practice it, play with it. And as I said, there are jobs out there, and the .NET jobs, although they're a little harder to come by, pay more than the PHP jobs by a fair amount. So if you really, if you kind of like this stuff and you really want to play with it, it actually can. And as I said, there are occasionally internships at the district. I'd, I'd have to talk to Joyce. I haven't talked to her for a while. But there might be a few open. It's a real internship. They throw you into work right away. They do give you somebody to kind of a, a mentor to help you. They are paid. And they involve a lot of, um, so the two skills that they really involved in was ASP.NET and, and the database skills, the SQL database skills. All right, so I will post this to GitHub, and then, as I said, we'll build on it uh, Tuesday. I always forget what day of the week it is. <laughs> we could probably finish this on Tuesday, because I think everything else will be relatively easy. This one, this one I got distracted on. And as I said, I, I might actually show you an alternative for this because it could be done much simpler here. But I, again, this gives you an example you can use in the for your assignment, which does have a... Still, it's a little bit different. I don't think you actually have to do any looping. There's no arrays involved. So 
you just oh the only part that's really the same is you need a book and you need a, a class I think I called it person info All right, so I'm going to call that a day unless you guys do you have other questions. What? You sure? Let me kill the video.